Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'll be doing an introduction to the first of many future videos answering a question that a lot of people have been asking me about on Twitter recently, and that is, how do I get into iOS security research or exploit development? So there's not a lot of information online about this topic, and especially information for beginners. So hopefully this video will point you in the right direction on what you need to know to learn iOS security and how you can learn to create exploits for it in the future. So first of all, you should know that I'm in no way an expert at iOS security research, and I definitely do not have the experience to be able to create my own private jailbreaks or anything like that. I do know a decent amount about how iOS works, and I've written a few exploits in the past for simple things, but I am also only a beginner. So although I am no expert, hopefully this video will still point you in the right direction on where to get started with iOS security, and basically teach you some of the things that will be required for it. So there's probably three main things that you really should learn when you're starting out with this. And the first one is just simply understanding the iOS internals and how it really all works. Now there's a lot of good documentation on this online. There's a lot of good books. The iPhone wiki is probably one of the best places to learn this from because this wiki is written by the iOS hackers such as I Hate Snow uh, and many other ones who've developed or contributed to jailbreaks in the past. So this website here basically has information on everything you'll ever need to know about um, how iOS works and it has a lot of information about older exploits and there's a lot of cool stuff on here so I'll leave a link to this in the description I recommend you guys go and check this out there's also a lot of good books one of these being the iOS hackers handbook although this book is quite outdated it's more targeted at iOS 4 devices but um, some of the stuff that it teaches in that book is still useful for modern iOS versions um, if you want a more up-to-date book then the iOS internals book by Jonathan Levin is a very up-to-date book and it covers how modern jailbreaks work such as Pangu and Taiji. So the second essential thing that you need to learn is C or Objective-C programming. So this is pretty much what iOS is built upon. The iOS kernel is the XNU kernel and this is open source, you can see this. This is pretty much completely written in C with some C++ stuff for the IO kit but majority of this is built in C and this is the foundation of iOS itself. All the applications that run on iOS are built in uh, Objective-C so Springboard and any other system application and then applications that uh, developers build with Xcode are also built in Objective-C or sometimes Swift which is actually a language built off of Objective-C so C and Objective-C are the foundation ones that you'll need to learn for iOS related tasks. So the third most important thing to learn would be ARM assembly language. Now this is the assembly language for the ARM platform, which is what iOS devices run off of. Now, there's a difference between ARM v7 and ARM64. They're different uh, instruction sets, but learning either one will help you get started. So you can see here in Hopper Disassembler, this will basically dis uh, take apart programs and produce you the assembly code for them. This is the iPhone 4S's kernel on iOS 9.2.1. So it's very essential that you know how to read assembly code, and specifically ARM assembly, because you need to know, for example, what this instruction does, how the registers in the CPU will end up after this instruction has been executed. This is uh, essential to know before you can be able to manipulate these programs at a lower level and create exploits for them. There's a lot of good tutorials online uh, covering the basics of ARM assembly. I won't be going over it in this video, although I might do a separate video on that in the future, so if you do want to see that then leave a comment down below. Um, but yeah, so once you've learned these three main things, or the basics of these three main things, you're ready to get started and to get started you're going to really need some test devices or some older iPhones that you can easier play around with um, with these things so one of the easiest uh, devices to use for this would be an iPhone 4 because this device does run quite a late version of iOS it runs iOS 7 and it does have access to a boot ROM exploit so you have pretty much um, a lot of flexibility of what you can do with it you can mess around with all the low-level components and obviously you're jailbroken for life with that so if you mess up something while you're experimenting, then you can just restore and re-jailbreak. But any old device is good, even the really old ones such as the iPhone 2G, the 3G, 3GS. These ones are all great for testing out custom firmwares and other low-level things. But um, any device really is good, uh, specifically, uh, especially 32-bit ones, because 32-bit is what you should really start out with when messing around with this stuff, because there's a lot more things you can do on 32-bit using K-Loader and other things like that. 64-bit uh, is a bit limited for when starting out, but get a few research devices. You can find them online on eBay, quite cheap. So once you've got your test devices ready, you're ready to go ahead and get started with messing around with them. So one of the first things that I'd recommend starting out with is the dual boot guide. Now, 
If you go on this GitHub page, I'll leave a link to this in the description by Dan Zap. This is a full tutorial on how to have a tethered dual boot um, and manually do it basically. So if you guys know about the call boot at all, that's an untethered dual boot tool. It basically partitions everything for you and installs the OS and allows you to swap between two OSs. This is basically how this works and it teaches you how to manually do it and in that process you actually learn a lot about how iOS works and how the lower level components of it work. So I recommend following through with this tutorial. This, this explains it very well. I've followed through this a few times and you do learn a lot about iOS. And the freedom with this but over uh, Cool Booter is that you can actually choose which iOS you want to boot to and even custom ones. You can have a main iOS of like iOS 7 and your secondary iOS could be some custom iOS you've built yourself. So there's a lot more freedom with using this than using Cool Booter. Although it is a bit uh, of a lengthy process, it'll probably take you about an hour or more on your first try doing it. But it is quite very well explained on here so hopefully you wouldn't have any issues with it. Another great thing you can play around with is Kloader. Now this is an open source tool used to bootstrap custom images on iOS. So basically this will allow you to, um, this is actually what allows CoolBooter to work. It allows you to swap between the two partitions. But with this you can do a lot, whole lot of other things. You can um, kickstart custom restores or downgrades. So on your 32-bit devices, this is a 32-bit only um, tool. But this is used for downgrading from iOS 9 back to iOS 6. Um, that's been done in some cases with the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2. Um, but there's also a lot of other things you can do with this. And I've even got a few videos on this on my channel. Um, one of them showing how you can enter DFU mode from user land using this. So DFU mode is normally only entered through the button combinations in the hardware. But using this tool you can actually um, enter DFU mode or KDFU mode from user land. If you want to learn more about how iOS apps work at a lower level then watch this video I made um, a long time ago. February 6, 2016, so over a year ago. But this video will teach you how to use SciCrypt, which is basically an injection tool for iOS apps. And in this video, I demonstrate basically injecting on uh, the settings app on iOS. And it basically allows you to modify anything and you can change things, change values. Um, it's quite a cool video. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. And finally, to actually learn how to develop apps and tweaks for iOS, Check out my Fios Tutorials playlist, there's 18 videos on here teaching you various different things. Um, hopefully you'll find these useful. Some of these videos are quite old and may not be uh, best made, but they should hopefully teach you some stuff as well. And finally, if you actually want to understand how exploit writing works and how vulnerability research works, then go to my website and I've got a couple tutorials on here. There's probably more on there by the time you're watching this video, but at the moment there's only two and these will teach you basically how to write simple exploits for very basic vulnerabilities in um, programs on iOS so I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So that's pretty much it for this video. If there's anything specifically you want me to make a video on in the future then leave a comment and hopefully I'll read all the comments and make some more videos related to this soon. So yeah all the links in the, will be in the description. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.